You start all over? Okay, start all over. Yeah, okay. it's going. Okay. okay. Long ago, on the big island, on the corner coast, there lived a fierce chief. His name was Vaha Nui. Vaha Nui means big words. Sometimes I go around talking big, eh? He had big words. He could beat everybody. In spear throwing, he caught all the spears. He could throw with accuracy, and on the battlefield, he was unstoppable. No man could lift him from the ground. Well, I knew he knew wrestling. He knew bone breaking. He knew the secret art of Huna. And well, I knew he, as his fame grew and his conquest grew in the big island, he heard of the names of Kane and Kanaloa, two great chiefs who was bringing life, uniting islands, bringing water to the lands, to the lois and the uplands. The forest lands and down to the sea, what Anui wanted to go and defeat them. And so, ooh, come aboard his va'a, his canoe, ooh, across the Ali Nui Haha Channel, ooh, across the great seas of the Molokai Channel, until he came to Lanai, to a place called Kanolu. Now, what Anui did not know, no, he did not know. That actually, Kane and Kanaloa were the great gods that had come all the way from Kahiki. They had come to bring to these islands life, because the life of the land and the richness of the land is contained in water. So Kane and Kanaloa, the great brothers, had come. And when they came, everywhere they went, they sang this song. From the land, from mountaintop to seaside, they sprouted on the land, which I cannot find. The great, great fountains of water, which Uncle, here it is, great fountains of water. And we all know when fountains of water flow, When fountains flew and the land was rich, suddenly the first thing that appeared were the insects. Bees and the butterflies. And from the earth they grew everywhere they went. Great forest sprung up. <clears throat> forest of Kukui. Yeah. Kamani. Yeah. And in the highland forest, there are great core trees that grew up to the sky. And everywhere, like you know, if you travel these islands, every place you know with a town, it has a name. Why Pahu? Why? Because why is life. Water is life. And everywhere they went, life flew and grew throughout all the land. Why Pahu, why Nai, why Lupe, why Hole, why Hiawa, why Pahu, why Nai, water, water in the Vai, Vai, the life of land. Wow. Yes. Well, cunning Kanal, of course, they were tired, right? Because they had taken their great o, -O sticks, they great, went on their great rounds of the islands, bringing life, bringing life to the land. Wow. They had brought with them, for the first time, to the island, 
to these islands, a young brother. His name, his name, if I can find him, his name was Kaniapua. Now, Kaniapua was new in his Kinolao, in his form as a human being. And Kaniapua was told, go up, fetch water from the springs of Nai Nai Hale at the top of the cliff. And so, obedient to his brother, Kaniapua walked up the cliff all the way to the very top until he found at the very precipice and looked over into the great sea, the great bay of Kainolu. Oh, he saw the water for the first time. And so, thirsty from his climb, he decided to jump into the water. And he did. He dove down into the water. And he began swimming around in the bottom of the water. And what should he see coming out from the reefs but the beautiful, beautiful fish that was special and sacred to the great goddess Haumea. It was the ki'i fish. And the ki'i fish took Kaneopua down to the reefs and he swam around and around and around and around. And then, and then from out of the crevice came the uhu, the parrotfish. And the parrotfish swam out to Kaneopua and it too took him swimming in the great sea. And all day long he swam and swam and for the first time experienced what it was that his brother his brother, the great god, Kanaloa, his kingdom. Wow, he was tired. And so he swam up to the surface. He went up and he remembered, oh, oh, he had to get the waters from the springs of Kainoa. So he dipped his gourd, but he was so thirsty. He was so thirsty that he drank. Blub, 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 blub. <laughs> he drank some more. Blub, 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 blub. Woo! New in his body, feeling his thirst quench. Kanipo drank one more time, glug, 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 until he felt something strange. He felt he felt a movement. He felt a tightness. He felt his bladder filling up. And Kanipo didn't know what to do. And before he could even think, from out of the center of his body came the shishi. And the shishi, oh, the shishi flow down into the water. And being new, and being young, and being inexperienced, Kaniapua followed the path of the sun. He returned back, he returned back to bring the water to his brothers. Wow. Being new in the body. When he drank. Oh, Kane and Kanaloa, Kane and Kanaloa, oh, oh, they realize that this young brother, this young brother had contaminated the springs of Nai Nai Hale. But they were, they were elders and they were kind to the young. And though he had made a mistake, they knew he needed time. And to learn, like all of us, yeah? We're all in school. We're all going to learn. And so, boo! Kani and Kanaloa turned themselves into great seabirds. And they circled the island of Lanai. Kani, Kani poor ran to the shoreline. He ran to the shoreline. He started waving at them. He started waving at his brothers. Please, please wait for me. They were sailing farther and farther away. And then, as if in the silent speech of animals, he realized they were telling him that he had to stay behind and find his way to Kahiki. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Kaniapua. Kaniapua was sad. He was sad because he was all alone. So, slowly, slowly, he taught himself. He taught himself first to build a holly. He built himself a holly. And every day he went to the shoreline to study the ocean. Some days he saw, he saw the Naya swimming in the great sea of Kanaloa. Ooh. 
Some days he looked out and he would see the flight of the birds across the sky. And he wondered where they, all, where they were all flying to. And then at night, at night, while during the day sometimes, he would go down and he would still play with the kitty. He'd watch them. He'd watch the reefs. And he'd study the reefs and the kitty and all the fish below the water, below the surface. Oops. Every once in a while, he'd fall down and dip himself in the sea too to swim. But he waited and waited. At night, at night, Kanea studied. He studied the stars. And if Uncle can find his flashlight, he'll even show you. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not that. He studied the stars every night. And some nights he looked up and he saw patterns, he thought. And he said, that looks like Manai Kalani, the fish hook of Maui. Oh, oh, oh. That looks like Kalupio Cavello, the kite of Cavello. And they looked up and said, Ivi Kuamo'o. Oh, the spine of the fish. I see it. And over here he said, Kikau Makaliki. Each night he went out and studied the heavens. As during the day he studied the land. And the months and the weeks passed. He was lonely. He was lonely there, waiting each day for a sign of his brother's return, but he never returned. And then one day he heard a great poo sounding across the sea. Kanepua ran down there to the sea. He heard this great poo. And the poo sounded something like this. Something like that, but better. He ran down. He ran down to the sea to see who it was. And when he looked out at the sea, he saw coming across, coming across the channel, from Maui was a great canoe. And the canoe sailed upon the sea. And His Majesty caught his breath as he saw the canoe dancing on the sea. Kanepo ran down to the seashore as fast as he could. And the canoe, to his all of his dreams and his hopes, the canoe came and anchored there in the Bay of Kanolu. Kanepo ran down, waving his arms, waving his arms. And from the bow of the canoe came a voice. The voice was the voice of Kilo. Kilo, a spokesperson, spokesperson for the great chief. And the Kilo said to him, I am the Kilo. This is the canoe, the great Va, the great chief of Anui. We seek the chief's cunning Kanaloa. He has come here to stand on the chest, for he is the greatest chief of all the islands. And Kanipua knew they were speaking of his brother. And he thought, how foolish, how foolish my brothers are gods. How foolish this chief. But he said, he said to the Kilo, 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 can you take me uh, to, with you on your journey? I see, I too see Kane and Kanaloa. They have gone to Kahiki. Oh, said Kilo, Kahiki. We've heard in all our stories and chants, Kahiki. The land, the land below the, below the horizon. Ah, that's where they have gone. We know not the way, but we will find them. And Kanaloa said, well, I can help you. You, <laughs> We have no room in our canoe. But uh, I won't take much space. I'll sleep on the, I'll sleep on the deck. No, no room on the deck. Uh... Ah, uh, ah, uh, Kilo, I'll sleep, I'll sleep on the, on the ama. No room on ama. I'll sleep on the yaku. No. Whatever he asked. No, no, no. It was all no. Kanepua, discouraged, went back to his own hale. But when he looked out at the sea, he said, Oh, great Kilo, Kilo, I've been studying the weather. I've been studying the signs. The whole Ilona's. This is not a good time to sail, Chief. The water will be very, very troublesome and rough. Please, be careful, be careful. Ah, said the Kilo, you're just a little boy. You don't know nothing about sailing. And so, that evening, Kanepo went to sleep, troubled, because in the morning, as the, as the canoe, the great Ba'a sailed out, in the beginning, it was very calm, but then in the distance, Suddenly, you could hear.
There was thunderous, thunder coming. The clouds thicken over the skies, and soon the men grew fearful as the waves began to mount and to mount, and the great canoe was tossed and turned upon the sea, up and down, up and down. Men cried out, Kilo! Their food, their water was spilled. The canoe barely got back, and they returned again to the Bay of Kanolu. Now, now, the great chief himself stood on the canoe. He scolded the kilo. He scolded the kilo. Kilo! You! That boy knows more about the signs in the sea than you. Bring him on board. Well, that was how. Kaniapur, Kaniapur climbed aboard the great Va'a and became part of the crew. And they sailed, and they sang as they sailed. They sang your lovely song. Tato otagata folau, vau lau winna, ete la misele eo mai. Tuilo ele selemana heta pena pena. They sailed across the seas, the great seas. They sailed all the way, all the way as far as they could go. And in the beginning, it was smooth sailing. The canoe caught fish. Everything was beautiful. The men were happy. Every day, the wind was at their feet. They found islands with beautiful fruit, cow. Oh, life was good. Life was really, really good. But then, following the sea, there the Naya led them. Things began slowly to turn darker. For suddenly, the wind stopped. The wind stopped. There was no sound at all. The men grew fearful. And then they heard, they heard coming from the ocean, from below their canoe, a huge grinding sound. As the whole ocean began to bubble up. And the two faces the two faces began to meet. These were the cliffs Pali Uli and Pali Kea. For the men were now entering the scary islands. They were being tested by Kane and Kanaloa. Oh, the canoe, the canoe was surrounded by these two giant cliffs. And as they got closer and closer, and closer to the canoe, the man began to panic again. Kanipua, young and brave, ran to the front of the canoe. Enokapua, have a olua, he shouted. O Kaniapua, koi noa, nui ko hila hila. He spoke to the cliffs. Ehoi ka, paliuli. Ehoi ka, palikea. Uh, the cliffs were threatening to kill the ship. My hana o ko pela, he said. And then, and then the cliffs recognized him. Him too as a kua. That he was indeed the brother of Kane and Kanaroa. And so the two cliffs receded quietly into the sea. The canoe went forward out of that dark and troubled water until it came again to sunshine, to other islands with fruit, and it was beautiful. It was magnificent. That was the first challenge. There were three more, and then again, the ocean began to bubble. Ocean began to bubble. They saw signs. They saw Kohola. They saw Kohola, the great whale. They knew Kanalo was with them. And they knew Kane was with them. And in the sky above, they saw seabirds. And they knew. Kanipo knew his brothers would be with them. This was just the second death. In our life, we need signs. 
We need signs every day to keep us with hope. Well, unfortunately, again, the skies begin to rubble. And this time, something scarier, something more dangerous appeared in front of the men. Because out of the mist, out of the mist, they thought they saw. They thought they saw the scariest thing they've ever seen. Oh, it was a dog feast. A huge dog. The demon dog of Hila. Oh, oh, the men cried. Oh, oh, we perish. We perish. It's the demon dog of Hila. Wakaneapu stood up again. He knew his brothers were testing him. Oh, this is just, this is just a sacred island of Kane. Those are just clouds. The dog is nothing more than your fear, men. Sail on, sail on through the clouds. Sail on, sail on, trust me. And so the men did, the men did, the men did. They tightened the, they tightened the mass. They trimmed the sail and they sailed on. Ooh, through through the clouds and the demon dog of Hina. Until again, they were calm seas again. They were in calm seas and it was so sunny. But then Kaniapua climbed to the front of the boat and he said to them, he said to all of them, with great kindness in his eyes, he said, there's one final task that remains and I must do this one alone. If, if I do not return, you know the way. Follow, follow the night. Follow the kohola. Follow the stars. You know the way back to Hawaii. Follow them. But this task remains for me. And having said this, Kaneopua dove into the sea. Down, down, down. Just as he had done earlier in his life. Down, down into the very depth of the sea, to the darkest, darkest corner of the sea. And there, Kaneapua waited, holding his breath as long as he could. And from out of the depths, he saw, he saw at first, just a shape. It was a strange shape. It looked like stones themselves. They didn't move. And Kaneapua came up to the stone. And he said, please, please, I come. I come on a mission of peace. To honor my ancestors, if you are, if you are my grandmother, please, please, I am Kanepua. And slowly, the figure moved, began to move, and to turn towards him. And the figure was nothing other than Honu Kea, Ea, Ea, his great grandmother, the great turtle of the sea. And she faced Kanepua. And she said, oh, 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 my Mo'opuna, what is it that can I do for you? Oh, 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 my, my Mokua, please, I come on a mission. I know that the winds, gores of Lo'o Ma'o Ma will be released by my brothers. And I need you, grandmother, to help us. For we are challenged by Kane and Kanaloa. I know this is my final task. And if I do not save my shipmates, what has it been worth my while? I've learned to love the Kanaka. I must help them. Please, please help me. And so the grandmother said, Oh, my Mohopuna, I give to you my own life. Now, from, from my Na'au, I give you the sacred rope. Kanepo, you must take this rope. And when the winds come, you must bind your men. You must bind them with this rope. From my very self, bind them to the aina, bind them to the reef, bind them to the honua. My power, the power of family, the power of love, can withstand any storm. So Kaniapua, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the great, the great turtle, the great turtle, honu, kea, ea, ea, turned around and disappeared from Kaniapua into the very reef itself. And he swam back up and up and up to the ship. And when he arrived, 
he pulled out his string, which should be right here. Now, Uncle doesn't have it. There's a beautiful string. And he wove, right there is a string on the desk over there. Right there, the green rope over there. Is there a set of string? He pulled the string. No, 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 not that one. Uncle got to step out from the scene. Just one second. One second. One second. He's going to step over here. He's going to climb over here. Uncle going to step to the left. He's going to step to the right. Get him on a string. Pause a minute. Pause a minute.